Hey, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. Uh, kind of just for fun the other day, I was browsing around eBay for some older, like, vintage zines. Um, eBay is not really the best place to get zines in general because the majority of them are older zines, which go for kind of too high prices for my liking, where, you know, I understand why for people who really want an actual preserved or reasonably decent condition copy of a super awesome Riot Girl zine that was actually handed around in the 90s or something, then yeah, that that makes sense. And I'd say that generally for what you're getting for like these these rare pieces of media, then I understand why they would be uh, slightly more expensive to get your hands on. Uh, for me, though, I don't really like spending a lot of money on zines. I prefer to do trades, um, and I'm always just a little hesitant to spend a bunch of money on zines, or at least on any one particular zine, because I like the more free, uh, free trading, free flowing thing. Uh, but just randomly, I was browsing around on eBay and found someone who had listed a whole bunch of vintage zines for very reasonable prices, for basically the same amount that you could get a new zine for. Uh, I think they ended up being approximately $3 per zine. Um, and so just kind of on impulse, I bought a big old pack of them and ended up chatting with the uh, seller who uh, is also a zine stir and threw in a couple zines and I'm gonna, like a couple extra zines and I'm gonna send some of my zines out uh, to as a thank you and just made for really nice collection connection. Um, so I thought what I might do is go ahead and do a live unboxing of this big box of zines that I got sent from this fabulous person on eBay. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> and while I'm sitting here fiddling with the, with the box, which has a lot of tape and stuff on it, I'll just say that I'm kind of trying out this new recording setup, which I'm rather, usually I record on my phone and then have to transfer it to my computer. And that is basically a giant pain in the ass. And so I'm trying to think of ways that I can make it easier for myself to uh, sort of reduce the number of steps involved in making videos because I have a lot that I want to make, a lot of ideas, and I just kind of want to make it more fun and less work. <laughs> so we'll sort of see how the quality of this one turns out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we... Oh my god. So we got the brown paper mostly cut off of it. Okay. I'm gonna try to preserve the address on the back just because I'm not. I gotta make sure that I have a return address that's proper. Uh, by the way, this is my new art room, uh, or, or part of it anyway. It is basically just like this longish, kind of awkward room off of the side of the kitchen, but it's totally perfect for an art room. Um, it's got this big, like, slope from the ceiling. Okay, cool. Oh, yay! <laughs> so I got a little message written on it. It says, Hi, Wesley. Hope you enjoyed the zines. Many thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Hope you don't mind me, like, shouting out your name here. So now we'll just open up this mangled priority mail box. I am very pro that. <laughs> pro mangling. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So, now that all the tape's off, this is sort of what it looks like, and I'm unfolding the box and getting this big old stack, holy crap, a big old stack of zines. Heck yeah! Okay, so some of these I, I knew I was getting, some of these I didn't, so I'm just going to kind of go, go through them. All right, <laughs> so first off is, ooh, there's, oh, three issues, wow. Three issues of Suburban Waste, uh, and it seems like, let's see, this issue two says August 2004, so I'm going to imagine, oh, and this uh, issue one, it's sort of cut off, but it says July 2004. It's got this really cool hand-drawn comic-y cover featuring this gigantic McDonald's and this sort of, uh, let's see, on the back of uh, issue three, I saw just real quick. It says, send letters to Jen 
in Santa Clarita, California. So that's where this zine was created. I'm going to assume that they were probably created in about the same place. Oh man, the back of this is so cool. So the back of this has this uh, shell, <laughs> uh, shell gasoline at sky high prices, future site of Super Walmart. Now $2 cheaper, water treatment, like this just is so detailed and so funky. Oh my god. On the front here, it's got this fucking minivan with a Jesus fish on it. <laughs> or a station wagon, sorry, not a minivan. Oh my god, it's got a fucking Hummer. Those were all the rage. Do you remember when it was like a big deal to rent a Hummer or like a, what, they're like Hummer limos. Oh my god. Greetings from suburbia. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna, oh man, this is so cool. And this is such like a classic scene. It's, it's primarily text, like it's a lot of text in it. Oh, but then it's got some cool drawings and stuff. Okay, so let's just, let's just start. I'm going to go ahead and read this intro thing. I suppose I don't want to spend too terribly long in any one zine, but also, like, they're vintage, and you, you want to see them, right? So this this intro, it says, Greetings from suburbia. I grew up in a family-filled suburb of Los Angeles, where huge, identical two-story homes and upscale shopping centers are aplenty. About 30 minutes from Hollywood, you know when you've arrived when you start to notice that every available foot of open land is being paved over by massive tractors to build more McDonald's and Starbucks. Fresh green, laws are <clears throat> fresh green lawns are mowed by hardworking gardeners who can't even speak much English, and endless rows of tropical palm trees are planted in the front lawn, courtesy of Home Depot. Groom's dogs bark wildly through the wrought, wrought iron fences, trying to break free and run instead of being trapped on that designer leash and pampered like a child. Man-made lakes and trickling waterfalls only add to the beauty of this paradise, but what do they really add to the community itself? Did the new million-dollar renovations to the mall, including skylights and Abercrombie and Fitch store and cooler benches in the food court, really make a safer place to live? Soccer moms of the nation, pack your fanny packs, grab the kids, and hop in the minivan. We're not in Kansas anymore. This is suburbia. <laughs> oh my god. And the very first, like, section, page section, is titled Anywhere But Here. Oh man, I'm really, really excited to read this. It's got a bunch of cool sections. Under the bridge. Building the future, repeating the past. <laughs> oh man, America has more shopping malls than high schools. Man, it's got these little illustrations and comics and things. OMG, Erica, did you get Uggs? I love them. <laughs> Holy shit. I remember when Uggs were all the rage. <laughs> Where are they now? Why? <laughs> They've moved to Santa Clarita. Celebrity has been reunited in the suburbs. Oh my god. This is such a mood. This is such like a... Oh my gosh. So it looks like the artist who drew the cover art did a few illustrations for the interior, too. This is a really long zine, too. It's got a few submissions, but it's mostly by one person. Super rad, super zany, and I can't wait to... Oh my god. You know, you know that this is a fucking zine-ass zine when the one of the last pages is just, like, lyrics from La Tigre. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. Okay. Can't wait to read those. Uh, probably won't bother flipping through uh, two and three. I imagine that they probably have similar similar vibes, but I'm just super excited to... Of course I say that, and then I'm, like, flipping through so that you can't see. Oh man, look at this center collage! <laughs> oh my god. Alright, alright. So that is Suburban Waste, and this is, like, this is everything that I could have ever hoped for from a zine titled Suburban Waste. I am super excited. Alright, next up... We've got two issues of a zine called Infect 
infect, infect, okay. <laughs> Infectitious. Infecticitis. Infecticitis. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Infecticitis. <laughs> uh, from January 2006. This is number four, and I also have number three, which is from March 2005. Alrighty. And these are by someone named Haley Murray, or Hallie. Hallie Murray. Oh, this is from Massachusetts. <laughs> Look at that. Home. Winchester, Massachusetts. Home. <laughs> A place to go when school isn't in session. Sometimes it feels like being stuck in purgatory, and I always have way too much time to think. It's unhealthy. I love these. I fucking love these. These teen zines, you know? Oh my god, I have to point this out. <laughs> right here, it says, Hello, my name is Hallie. And it has the pronunciation Hallie, like Halle Berry. L like right after the <laughs> my initial thing was to read it as Haley. I love that. I really love teenage zines, like zines made by teenagers. And okay, so can I like can I talk about something real quick? There was there's this uh, zine distro. It's more like a Patreon kind of monthly subscription thing, and um, I don't remember the name of it offhand. But I was you know I came across it and I was kind of excited. And I was like, oh, I can get get new zines delivered in. Then I was reading the description and it said something like, uh, we filter through all of the lame zines to bring you the best zines from up and coming zine artists. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Up and coming zine artists? Zine artists aren't getting like picked out to do big publishing deals. What the fuck are you talking about? God, and it pisses me off. And it says like, you know, we get rid of all the angsty crap. We get, they said, they literally say on their about page, it says, trust us, there are a lot of weak sauce zines out there. God, it pisses me off. <laughs> like, this is what zines are. This is the fucking core of zines. And these people are going to go off like that. <sighs> all right. All right. Mini rant over. We're just going to keep, I'm going to keep going on this one. Oh, man. It seems to be invincible. All you gotta do is stay alive. Spoon boy. <laughs> wow. So it looks like, it says, I started writing a song or two for this, but I just couldn't finish them. I don't think I've ever actually finished one, especially not now. So the, so Hallie writes songs. That's so cool. This is so cool. Like, you're learning so much about someone who, I mean, presumably they're still around, just, you know, much older now you're you're getting a very special view of someone at a at a time in their life when they made this it's it's so cool oh my god oh my god an ode to friendship bracelets <laughs> first off i would like to thank madonna for the birth of the jelly bracelets fad in the 80s wow in the summer of 03, I took courses at Mass Art for four weeks. It was a really incredible experience, and even though I don't talk to the friends I made then anymore, I still carry them on my left wrist every day. Oh. Uh, a bunch of the friends who that she made at Mass Art making friendship bracelets. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here's a little self-portrait of, of uh, Hallie who had a mohawk and Hallie's best friend Justin who was moving away. I just gotta stare at this image for a little bit. <sighs> okay, this is, this is why I make zines. And this is why I read zines. And this is why I want to make zines. And this is why I want to continue making zines. Is for stuff like this. Just like the real... The real deep, raw personal expression. Man, I really wish that I had sort of, I don't know, gotten it, gotten it together. <laughs> um, oh my god. Bike thieves are damned to the lowest pit in hell. This is the best. This is the best scene ever. And it's kind of local to me, sort of. I mean, it's Boston area. That's local enough. 
I am so excited about this. I'm totally also like anytime that there's an email address in one of these, I totally want to email it and just to see if it's still active or being checked or anything. I know I have a bunch of old email addresses that I'm not checking anymore, especially because they're all associated with my dead name. But like, wouldn't that be really cool if someone happened to be using the same email address or, or happened to be checking it and found this person reading their zine like 20 years later? <laughs> Um, what was I saying before? I was saying something. Oh, just how I kind of, I kind of wish that I had been able to, uh, make zines more when I was, uh, when I was a teenager. Like, I had known about them, and I, I was just like, I was just in such a, such a state, like, I really, I really didn't have any place for self-expression at all when I was a teenager, given my family situation. Um, and so my whole, my whole point, my whole, me like, mentality was just like, get the fuck out. And, uh, and so I just, I totally really love seeing and getting involved in the sort of teen angsty zine culture, the weak sus zine culture, whatever that is, like, I'm... That is what I'm really excited to see. Alrighty, so that is Infecticitis 3 and 4. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, look! We got another Suburban Blight, <laughs> number 7. Oh, man, I'm building a little Suburban Blight thing here. I'll just put that with the other ones. Uh, oh, no, shit! This is Suburban Waste. This is Suburban Blight different one. <laughs> All right, Suburban Blight, number seven. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, this is by someone named Steph, and it says, Dear readers, after taking a while to put the last issue together, I recently found myself not knowing what to write about first. On a national level between government spying, uh, states proposing to ban abortion, and Congress waging a war on Sitgo, there's been way too much to fit into one zine. I've included some info about spying, but would like to wait for more events to play out before addressing abortion in Sitgo. Then there's the stuff happening on my end, like reading letters from detainees, taking the proxy exams, proxis? Never know how to pronounce that. And being witness to two banner drops. My comments on these things are all included in this issue. Many of the pieces in this issue are shorter and less formal than usual, simply because it is how I felt I wanted to approach these topics. I hand wrote a few pieces to add a personal touch. As always, feedback is welcomed and encouraged. Hope you enjoy reading. Oh shit, like, and this is from spring 2006. And isn't it fucking tragic that... <laughs> On a national level, between government spying, yeah, existing, states proposing to ban abortion, fucking happened, and Congress waging a war on Sitgo, I mean, I guess that one hasn't hasn't resurfaced, <laughs> but two out of three. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. So this is sort of about government spying, it's about wiretapping, and now we've got a lot of uh, internet privacy issues happening. <laughs> oh man, this is super cool. Again, a very classic cut and paste. This is my favorite sort of style of zine. Whoops, this one, this, uh, <laughs> this one's breaking out of its uh, staple a little bit. If your idea of fun threatens my right to feel safe, then you need to redefine your idea of fun. Oh my god. And this one is, this one, it's, it's a little comic. The first panel has two boys and two girls in the background, two boys in the front that says, ten, ten bucks to whoever gets one of them in bed first. Second panel has a girl being called that slut whore bitch. Cat call being honked at, and this fucking douche guy with a t-shirt that says, show me your titties. Man, isn't that so legit? <laughs> yeah. Wow. They've got a little section of good books in the back, song quotes, zines that are politically radical. That's awesome. Cracks in the Concrete, number one. Okay, I totally know that zine. Cracks in the Concrete. A brand new zine from Luke, a young anarchist from New Jersey. I can't... I 
cannot remember where I've seen that, but I've definitely heard that title before, Cracks in the Concrete. I wonder if we have it at the library or if it's maybe in like the Sherwood Forest uh, zine library or something. I'll look it up. I'll see if I can find it. Oh man, the Slingshot Collective. Okay, so the Sling they're mentioning Slingshot. They are mentioning issue number 89. They're obviously up higher than that now, but the Slingshot Collective is like this uh, quarterly newspaper that's uh, published in Berkeley, California that I used to get a lot. And I believe they actually send free issues out um, just wherever, like shipping only issues. So maybe I'll, I'll see if I can contact them and, and start getting issues again. Um, I used to just grab them off of the street because they, they, there were a bunch of houses that would just get like a big pack of them and leave them for people to grab on my way. That was on my route home. So anyway, wow. Yeah. So that's Suburban Blight number seven. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got a big old stack. This one, Heart Check says by political prisoners uh and here it's got their got their names on the back it says jeffrey free lures and rob los ricos thaxton so this definitely seems to be like it's de it's definitely kind of an anarchist zine but i'm curious like what sort of zine it says dedication this zine is dedicated to all the brave warriors who have died struggling for freedom and to all of our imprisoned friends and comrades who have lost what little freedom they had struggling for land and liberty. You are not forgotten. With each act of resistance, your memory lives on in our hearts. The winds of change are blowing again, and they are pushing against our backs. The winds are pushing us forward and howling, fight back, up the rebels. Wow. That's really powerful stuff. <laughs> This was summer 2004 was when this one came out. And it looks like, okay, so it looks like it's a bunch of article type things. And so it's got um, a few like um, the Kabila uprising, building a foundation for change, international days of solidarity, anti-genetics campaigns and the Earth Liberation Front. They got a whole bunch of things. So it seems to be, I guess I would describe it as sort of like a, it's like news and updates about um, existing protests and, and um, yeah, and anarchist and rebellious actions. And a few sort of musings about that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> During the rebellion in Seattle on November 30th, 1999, labor and radicals again united. This time in the streets under the onslaught of police brutality. Together, black-clad anarchists and trade unionists battled the police, enduring tear gas batons and rubber bullets. 1999. You know what happened in Seattle again a few years ago? Oh, shit. This is like simultaneously really disheartening and really empowering um just this idea that we've we've been doing this for a, a long time and that we've had so many people who have been fighting back um so it looks like this one was made in salem oregon by the way anti-copyright 2005 maybe i'll try to scan these at some point and upload them for for reading at least any of them that are uh anti-copyright or intended to be T intended to be free real struggle means refusal anyway so you know you know how it is it's like it's empowering it's also it's a little disheartening to know that we've kind of had to do this for so long but it's also just it's nice to know that there have been people who have been doing this for so long it's very easy to sort of reduce the past into um I know that this isn't exactly the distant past, but just to reduce the past into a single narrative about like, oh, well, people during this time were blank. And it's like, there's always been a lot of, um, a lot of variety and there's always been, um, you know, activists willing to stand up and, and change things for the better. And that's really, that's really cool to see, I guess. Here's a, a zine called Resist from Minneapolis. Minnesota Bicycle Lane Industries. This one is really thick. 
Resist number 45. Holy shit. I'm always so impressed whenever you get these giant... When you, whenever you get these zines that have been going on just forever and ever and ever. I hope that Unfair Maiden is like that at some point. I can be writing Unfair Maiden number 100 and whatever. Winter. This seems to be mostly a per zine. Let's see. It's got a big list of what I listened to while during... While doing this zine. I love playlists. I'm totally gonna look up all of these. Let's see. Um, let me try to get to... Um, when the war with Iraq started seeming very likely, I cracked down and wrote a piece I've been meaning to write for a long time. Originally, it was supposed to be a piece about sanctions and the war crimes committed by the U.S. during the Persian Gulf War. However, the books I was trying to get my hands on were sort of expensive, and a couple books I did have were sort of hard reading because there were a lot of numbers and statistics, and I really do better with stories. When war started seeming inevitable, though, I just about went through the roof. I'd read about sanctions. I'd already done my research. I grabbed all my books about Iraq. I bought more books about Iraq. I read every piece in the paper I saw about Iraq. I researched on the internet. I wanted to put the info out in this zine, but I didn't want to wait until I finished my zine. I also didn't want to spend that kind of money sending out as many of these things as I really wanted to. I didn't want, even want to spend the time to lay it out. So in a move that was very unusual for me, I laid it all out on the computer, printed it out, and ran copies. I'll be slipping that pamphlet in its entirety right into the middle of this issue. I wonder if it's in this. Oops. Yep, here it is. Rationale for War Disarmed. So this was a, a big section about the war in Iraq that was just written as text and stuck into this. The rest of this was just majority persian, I'd say. I just got started on my own personal garden. I'm going with a square foot approach again this year. Don't remember if I've written about this before, but the idea is to maximize the use of space. Wow. This is so cool. Repairs anyone can do. I love that. I love self-sustainability stuff. Wow. This is legit. Cool. All right. I got to I got to keep going here. I, I'm or I'm just going to end up sitting and reading each one of these. Let's see what else. Oh, yes, this one. So this is kind of an unusual zine. It's it's a very tall uh booklet sort of zine. Um, so it's about twice as tall as, as most scenes. I know there's a, a word for this size and I can't remember it. Um, it's called Exquisite Corpse, a Journal of Books and Ideas. Uh, established 1983, this issue is number 33 from 1991. And let's see, the cover says Space Opera by Edward Field. American Zen by John Gorman. To sit in Burger King, free of fear, free of elation. To accept with a level spirit, Coke or Pepsi. Not to be scornful, not to be proud of being normal. Would be to be as a raked garden, water a leaf. So this seems to be, it seems to be a, uh... Okay, so this seems to be like um, uh, literature, poetry, some prose, and just some sort of uh, submission-based perzine, comments, musings, articles, that sort of thing. Um, I just opened up this random one, and uh, we've got on page 24, Quaint Ruminations by Violet Verduren. And I got, <laughs> and I gotta read this to you. Holy shit. The first, first sentence... I divide all my male friends into two basic categories, those who like to lick pussy and those who don't. <laughs> of those who don't, but do out of a sense of husbandly obligation, and those who do, but don't out of prissiness, I maintain they belong under one or the other of the aforementioned larger rubrics. <laughs> These demurrings are merely characterological. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so excited to read this. The titles of these are really fabulous. We've got uh, just a few titles of some of these writings. We've got uh, Dead Rights, A New Political Movement. Um, I wonder what I wonder what that's about. It says, it seems to be sort of about a, a new age movement something. 
I'm kind of, when it says dead rights, I think of like right to die, which interestingly my grandma was very involved in. Um, anyway, uh, my curves are not mad. <laughs> the atheist. Cruising at the A&P. <laughs> Taking the low road to high weirdness. In 18th century England, lunatics were sent away to Bedlam, an asylum whose name is now synonymous with crazed chaos. <laughs> this is so cool. Holy shit. Exquisite corpse. Isn't that just the greatest name ever? Here it's got this picture of a headless Elvis eating, presumably, uh, an Elvis. Uh, oh wait, what the hell is that? It's like a waffle. Oh no, fuck it. It's a cookie jar. The headless Elvis cookie jar. Or, you know, the Elvis cookie jar where you take off the head and you put the cookies in it. Oh my god. It looks like... So this was published at the Illinois State University Publications Center. <laughs> That's interesting. Although it seems to be like the people who ran it were in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Interesting. You could get... You could submit for a... Uh... Uh, subscription. Corpse subscription. I am, I am dying to get the corpse. <laughs> oh my god. All right, yeah, so I'm really excited about this one. It's it's certainly one of the more uniquely sized zines that I've ever had, and the content is very diverse and interesting, and like, wow, I'm super excited about it. Let's see what else we've got here. Let me make sure that they're all kind of in the right order. Okay, you know what? We'll just do this one. Uh, let's see. Here is a, um, let's see. Invincible Summer. Look at these sheep. Part five. So issue number five. June 2003. Here's the back of it. The text says, would you like a jelly bean? Isn't that one of your Harry Potter trick beans? What? No probably vomit flavor. No, it's tutti fruity. Yeah, no thanks. Vomit and boogers flavored. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Oh, man, this is cute as shit. Here's this on the inside. April 9th, 2003. I'm trying to write an introduction to my zine. I've seen so many people, they write these introductions in these old zines. I totally want to do that. I'll be back for the zine symposium, pdxzines.com. Oh, man. Wow. So this seems to be majority per zine. Oh, uh, there's comics in it. Look at this. June 25th. So this seems to be sort of like a diary zine, I'd put it as. Because they're all they're all labeled with uh, date titles like August fourteenth, etc. Yesterday was sort of traumatic. Wow. Let's see, got a lot of comics, lots of little diary comics. I really love a good comic. <laughs> I really, you know, one thing I really like about zine comics too is that they are not afraid to do the sort of free flowing panels and just sort of, it's a combination of text and images that's so just thrown on. It's so, it's so punky. It's like, it's breaking out of the expected shapes and standards of, of panels. And yet it always manages to be so readable and interesting. Like it just, this whole, like, look at this here where it just says, it says like, you have to go here. I have to go to school. Get off. My bus comes in two minutes. And you can see just this text, like, like loop up the page. It's so cool. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Invincible Summer. seems It's like a comic-y, diary, persine, text and comics. And I'm really, that's really cool. Really excited about that. Let's see. Revolutionary solidarity. Solidarity lies in action, action that sinks its roots in one's own project that is carried on coherently and proudly too, especially in times when it might be dangerous even to express one's ideas publicly. Oh. Oh. This one's not stapled. 
It's got M.C. Escher on the front. That's how you know it's going to be good. <laughs> Let's see. So it looks like it's... Let's see. This is anti-copyright June 2005. This edition compiled and printed in Santa Cruz, California. Please reproduce and distribute freely. Antipolitics.net. Anti-politics.net. We'll see, we'll see if that's still see if that's still active or look on Internet Archive or something. We've got Revolutionary Solidarity from Anarchismo in 1993. Revolutionary Solidarity, a challenge from December 2003, and Never Cry Wolf from Killing King Abacus Journal. So it seems to be like a collection of uh, text from other zines and uh, books and, and sections on, uh, you know, writings on solidarity. Revolutionary solidarity is above all a revolutionary practice. What that means is it carries within itself the aims of revolution. For this reason, as anarchists, we cannot base solidarity on any authoritarian or economic foundations. It is not a matter of obligation, duty, or debt. No one owes anyone solidarity, regardless of what they were, what they have done or what they are going through. Rather, the basis of solidarity is the recognition of one's own struggle in that of others. Interesting. I really like uh, anarchy zines that aren't super individualist. And I mean, the majority of... of um, Revolutionary zines and anarchy zines are not focused on hyper individualism, which I really appreciate. Anyway, so that'll be really interesting to read that collection. Here's another one Attacking Prisons at the Point of Production A Brief Look at the Militant Actions Against the Prison Industrial Complex. This is from New Jersey, Paramus, New Jersey. Does it have a date on it? This one doesn't seem to have a date on it. Uh, 1993? Shit, really? That old? I can't quite tell, but that's sort of my, that's my guess. No, 1995? It's sort of like, there's a lot of collections of uh, headlines and just news pieces about, um, basically, a, about attacks on prisons or, uh, you know, resistance against police and prisons. And I think, it looks like 1995 is the latest one that they have. A lot of these are from Europe, too. It says, like, German prison bombed attacks and Berlin, the Indomitable Gaul. So for, for some reason, a lot of these are in uh, Europe. French Radical Sabotage Prison Project. Interesting. So it seems it's basically just like a big, co a big collection of very short news articles about um, prison sabotage. Very interesting. Anti-mass methods of organization for collectives. This is from Montreal. The difference between mass and class. Why is it important to know the difference between mass and class? The, chance, the chances are there can be no conscious revolutionary practice without making this distinction. We are living in a mass society. We didn't get that way by accident. The mass is a specific form of organization. The reason is clear. Consumption is organized by corporations. Understanding the structure of the mass market is the first step towards understanding what happened to the class struggle. So it's sort of about talking about the mass, it's talking about mass market and how, how that's related to class and how you can sort of restructure, restructure that. I mean, it seems to be, I've read exactly <laughs> two lines of it, but wow. Primacy of the collective. So sort of moving away from, uh, uh, mass mass consumption and, and sort of mass market that's established by corporations into collective organization. Really, really interesting. Let's see. At daggers drawn, with the existent, its defenders and its false critics. Look at this fucking rad cover. It's like a lino cut thing. Look at this back. The secret is to really begin. Look at this. I've got to like photocopy that and use that in one of my own zines. That's the raddest shit I've ever seen. 
Okay, so it seems translated from Italian, and it was published in Santa Cruz, 1998, and it was published in 2006. Like, this this edition was in 2006. Um, life is no more than a continual search for something to cling to. One gets up in the morning to find oneself in bed, a mere matter of hours later a sad commuter between lack of desire and fatigue shit that's getting so that's getting to some depression stuff this is basically this seems to be like a whole fucking meaning of life zines not only do we desire to change our lives immediately is the criterion by which we are seeking our accomplices i will have to research a little bit more about kind of where this came from but I'm very interested in this. Sorry if I'm kind of hustling along. It's been a little while here. I'm getting tired. <laughs> From resistance to liberation. Music as a product, as entertainment, as a diversion, or music as a weapon, as protest, as outcry, as expression. It's got this little... Music is more than words and chords. Music is a tool in the hands of the artist, the terrorist, the revolutionary. Really love this. It reminds me of my own like artistic manifesto. Let's see. Trying to see. So this is like an anarchist band uh, fanzine thing. It's got a lot about animal liberation too. Uh, about cosmetic testing. This gig was arranged by the anarchist movement. Where the hell is that? Ray Dean JHB? Is that a British thing? Huh. So yeah, it seems to be sort of about... It's about, like... Animal... This particular one, it's about, like... Um, against the... Con against, um lab animals or uh, testing on animals from a band that seems to be called Necrophilia. This is definitely one of those ones I'm going to have to research a little bit. Seems to be approximately 1993-ish. Check that one out. Okay, we've got five more still. Wow. Thank you so much, Jason, for this big, big old pack of zines. Okay, the Pleiades. Number 14, this is the blood that we're made of. Welcome to Pleiades, number 14. This is all about family history and self-esteem and the frequent cruelty of life. It's about where our issues and emotional problems come from and how we can break negative and destructive cycles of thought and behavior. It's about trying to fill up our emptiness with all the wrong things. Miranda, March 2005. Wow. Dedicated to my late grandma, Lucy Higgins. Well, that's a good summary of what it is. It seems to be, it's like a, it's a, it's, it's personal writing. I, I suppose you would call this a Percy and it's just very, man, very deep. Seems to be a little bit about grief as well. Like grief about, um, about her grandmother's passing or just remembering. I would, this is very, like, lyrical Persian writing. And, but it's still got room for a big giant list of, whoops, big giant list of things that Miranda likes. Wow. Some books and zines that they've been reading. Wow. Really excited. Cool. That'll be really awesome to read. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of go through a little little quickly here. Here we go. We've got Against Prisons by Catherine Baker. And this is also by the Primus New Jersey uh, Collective. And it's, yeah, it seems very similar to the other one. It's just sort of a, an article type zine about um, being against the concept of prisons and and laws as enforcers of justice. 
The Anarchist Tension, Alfredo M. Bonanno. Anarchism is not a concept that can be locked up in a word like a gravestone. It is not a political theory. It is a way of conceiving life and life, young or old as we may be. Whether we are old people or children, it is not something definitive. It is a stake we must play day after day. 2006, this is again from Quiver Distro in Santa Cruz. And it looks like, let's see, original title, La Tension Anarchia. Text recorded at a meeting titled Anarchism and Democracy, Democracy Held at the Laboratory Anarchico, Anar Anarchico in Cuneo in 1996. So yeah, it's sort of, it's another, I really appreciate zines that have taken, that are basically taking the time to record and uh, document a lot of um, oral history and oral, uh, oral political movements too. So that's a, uh, sort of another zine that's doing that. Let's see. <laughs> Babylon Arson. <laughs> Arsonist's Prayer. Oh, man. Arson zine. First communique, winter 2004. We have always known what it will take to truly change this world, love, but we've been singing songs and holding hands for decades and our enemies have happily ignored us. Sometimes it seems our moral high ground is of little use against the culture of murderers and thieves. Perhaps then our love must take a different form. Perhaps we must love the earth and our desire for freedom as we love our children, parents, friends, and lovers unconditionally, fiercely. The people who profit from our pain have names and addresses. The institutions that hold this culture of death in place have buildings in every city, every town. <laughs> so definitely a, a radicalization political zine. Oh shit, there's so much text in here. Hot damn. <laughs> Can you see that? Wow. So it's a lot about sort of anti-cop revolution, too. Mad props to the kid who grabbed the cop's pre pepper spray can and literally gave them a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Another good one. And the last one from this pack, Armed Joy. Another Alfredo... Bonanno, so I imagine, let's see, Alfredo Bonanno, July 1993, this book was written in 1977, and the momentum of revolutionary struggles taking place in Italy at the time. Yeah, so this is again another sort of uh, translation of, of text, a translation of anarchic text. Wow, really cool. So, yeah, that is a big, giant pack of zines. We got a few per zines. We got a bunch of uh, anarchy zines, which I actually feel like I don't have that many. I've I've read a bunch of them. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it's always very interesting to see, see sort of anarchy zines and political zines as part of the history of zines. And I don't know. I'm just like, I'm in a daze now, to be totally honest. But... I'm so excited to start and read these. Thanks again, Jason. I can't wait to send you some zines as a thank you and send you some zines in return. And I guess I will... I gotta get reading. <laughs> so I will see you guys later. Bye.